Hey there, F3 Nation. Tommy Boy here. This week, Italian Job and I had the opportunity to sit down with three high-impact men from across the country. We were joined together to talk about what may or may not be an occurrence in your region, the glad clown. You're thinking to yourself, well, I know what the sad clown is. It's that guy who's out there. His canoe's turned upside down. He has no ability of his own to right himself. He thinks he's all put together, but in reality, he's broken inside. F3 exists to solve that problem. What is the glad clown? I don't want to spoil it from you, but in fact, once you listen to this episode, we'd love to hear from you. Are you experiencing this in your region? Is this topic striking a nerve? Do you have more questions? Do you want a part two? Give it a listen. Let us know. In the meantime, get out there and get after it. Looking good, Italian job. I'm feeling good, Tommy boy. It's been a while. I haven't seen you in a minute. I haven't seen you in the flesh in quite some time, so we need to rectify that. But yeah. it's good to see you feeling good, looking good, the whole thing. Likewise, my friend. Uh, I almost don't want to ask you what's new because I'm so on fire for this conversation today. So should we just like launch just into get it? into it? Yeah, jump right in, man. All right. It's uh, from the jump. This episode is called Glad Clown. And you're thinking, you know, what in the H-E double hell is this? Well, I'll tell you, it's um, we have the solution for what we call the sad clown in F3. And uh, through more and more conversations across my role on LDP, and I know your role in comms, uh, we reached out to one another and kind of had this banter back and forth of, hey, have you noticed dot, dot, dot? And I said, you know, let me let me bring up the camo, too, uh, as head of LDP. And camo, have you heard dot, dot, dot? Yeah, this is kind of a thing. I think this is becoming more of a thing. It might even be, uh, might even be knocking on the door of Phenomenon. So put it out there on the Slack channel. Some great Nantans replied. I think we even uh, piqued the interest of, of Dark Helmet, if I'm not mistaken, which means we're on to something. So before we reveal the big reveal, I want to reveal our guest today. So without further ado, I'm just going to do the old uh, left to right order here. Starting in uh, the Plymouth region in North Carolina, Nicoderm, welcome to the podcast. Quick name Arama, and how'd you get Nicoderm? All right, so Ron Askew, 38, Nicoderm. Uh, so long story short, one of my buddies that I used to work out with a little bit, he said, uh, hey, they're launching a workout area in Plymouth. Uh, I think it's pretty low impact. And I just quit smoking the week before uh, my first post. So I uh, sucked pretty hard that uh, first you know, few months, and that's where Nicoderm came from. Did you spill Merlot? Uh, real close, but uh, I, I held it down. <laughs> Good nice. Thing. He sw- swallow his pride and a little bit of the vomit. You know, whatever it yeah, takes, right? That's it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it could have been a lot worse. You could have been named Lung Biscuit. So I like that you have Nicoderm. That, yeah. uh, that's a nice step in the right direction. Well, we're glad you're here, man. Uh, continuing the pattern. Uh, let's see. We've got Bilbo all the way in from uh, Gold Rush. Welcome back, brother. Hey guys, uh, Andrew Richardson, 38 Bilbo. Um, I started F3 a little over four years ago. Gold Rush was still pretty new. They wanted guys to stick around, so they wanted to give good names. Um, so I'm a big Lord of the Rings fan, uh, and I happen to have a Lord of the Rings like theme tattoo on my right arm, uh, dedicated to my son, and they liked it, so they named me Bilbo. But they threw out, you know, Saruman, you know, Precious, some other bad <laughs> ones. And I'm, I'm pretty fortunate with the name that I got. Uh, so yeah. That's how I got it. Nice. Hey, Tom, Guys, Tommy it, Boy, it, it, have you ha, have you seen his uh, his tats? Have you seen his ink? Uh, I've seen some. I, we're not that intimate yet, but hopefully <laughs> soon. <laughs> That's a different podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I'm waiting for the Bilbo inspired shirt that just says "One does not just walk into the gloom," rather than <laughs> Mordor. So I, I'm just holding my breath, brother. Uh, and last, certainly not least, uh, from the Katy region, we've got Camo. How are you, brother? I'm doing great, man. It's good to see you guys. Good to be talking to you guys. You know, you're, you're looking good. IJ's feeling good. I'm just trying to be good, man. That's all I'm trying to do. So One foot in front of the other. Rinse and repeat. That's hey, it. in Stan Lee fashion, every podcast is somebody's first podcast. So give us your name, Arama, and how you got Camo. So Kevin Weaver, 43 Camo, um, down here in the Katy, Texas region. 
My first post was back in F3 Houston, and one of the founding mustard seeds there had the queue that day. Uh, we were doing name rama and he'd work through the typical questions of, you know, what do you do for a living? What do you do for fun? I guess my answers were boring and all those. So he asked me, what was, what's your favorite color? And man, just without even thinking about it, I said camouflage. So uh, camo was born that day. Outstanding. Yep. Outstanding. <laughs> so you could have been called lavender. So it's uh, yeah, 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 could have been, could have been. That's Good. one of those deals where think you need to think about your answers when you're uh, an yeah. FNG a little bit. F three periwinkle respect. <laughs> um, so again, just kind of back to the setup. Uh, we had this term glad clown that, that I threw out, and I kind of define it as that guy who shows up. You know, maybe he posts four plus times a week. He's got all the F three gear. Uh, he's at a lot of the C sops. He reads the books. He can quote Q source. Um, yet he consistently seems to exhibit like this walk that's practically opposite to the talk, right? So my first kind of starter question um, comes from a book by David Brooks that F3 Wait Time out in Omaha put to my attention. It's called The Second Mountain. And it's this idea of tribe versus community. And tribe comes from a place of of, of scarcity, Um and, and community comes from this place of abundance. And F3 has this abundance of opportunity for men to, to lead. And it just kind of rattled around my brain. I was like, man, the sad clown's the guy who says everything's good, but on the inside, he's hurt. And this glad clown is this guy who can who can play the role of, a, of an F3 character, yet seems to exhibit different behaviors when F3, the whistle blows after the first F. So do you think this is a phenomenon and why do you think this is a phenomenon or why does it exist? And I'll throw that out to the entire group. Yeah. So uh, I'll, I'll get us rolling. Um, I've definitely witnessed it. Um, I'm hoping it's not to the level of phenomenon, but I definitely think it's something that needs to be addressed. And, and obviously we all do. Um, you got this man who is, you know, he gets, he gets past the initial hurdles of showing up to workouts, he starts posting, you know, maybe he's posting faithfully several times a week and he's, he's grinding it physically. And then he just stops. He's, it's, it's kind of like he just stops in his evolution. Uh, he gets right and then and freezes it right there. And, uh, you know, I think we'll get into it, but I'm hoping some of it is awareness or lack of, of how much more it could be. I, I know some of it also is maybe he is protecting something because when you start to move into the second and third F, that requires a little bit of vulnerability. And, and some guys are uh, protecting maybe a facade or an identity they've created. But to answer your direct question, like, yeah, it's absolutely out there. Um, and we're never going to hit the mission unless we get we help guys overcome that. Hi. What about you, fellas? Yeah, uh, I really believe that a lot of uh, men miss out on the second F. Uh, I mean, like – Camo said that first F. I got. A, I know a lot of guys that knock out. You know, they're there four or five, six days a week. And when it comes to the second F, they don't realize how tight. You know, we're we're meant to have that bond as men. You know, around other hands. And I think a lot of guys miss out on that because they don't realize the potential that they could grow from having those bonds. Um, I think a lot of guys come to F three just from different places too, right? And they don't know you know, what they're getting themselves into. It is kind of hard to swallow at first or believe that this is really what it says it is, right? It's free, open to all men. Like, what is it? We live in such a society now where what does even being open to all men mean? But it's the truth. And it is what we really are. And we're not trying to sell anything. We're not trying to take anything back other than you growing as a leader. And some guys are quicker to that. I've invited guys to F3 or EH them and they've come the next day. And other guys take six months of work um, for whatever reason. But guys accept it at their own pace. And I think that it's a defensive mechanism, right? Where they want to seem like uh, they got this together and they can, um, you know, that they get it. But sometimes guys get it at their own pace. Yeah, Tommy Boy, I was a, uh, I was a glad clown for probably the first year and a half of F3. I mean, I, you know, I don't need, I don't need to talk to these guys. I've got a, I've got people I can talk to. I've got some friends I can chat with, which were always about sports and the weather and whatever was going on, you know, at the water cooler. Um, but I thought, you know, it's just a workout group, right? I mean, I'll get together on a Saturday, a Saturday's enough. And then eventually I started to sprinkle in a couple extra days. But until I realized that the three F's all have equal weight and should have equal weight, the first F, yeah, that's great. 
you want to get physically fit. You want to get stronger. That second F, especially coming out of a pandemic, I mean, that's where a lot of men really need to invest some time in. And just like Camo was saying, sometimes it takes vulnerability. And men say, I don't, I, I don't want to open up about insert what they think is a problem. The thing is, we all have these issues. We all have something that we need to talk to somebody about. And why not do it for free therapy in a COT? Um, so the second F aspect, but the third F, I mean, that's, if, we are, if you're only focusing on the first, second, or third F, then you're missing out what builds this whole thing together. They should have equal weight so that you can expand your physical prowess. You can get stronger emotionally, physically, and spiritually. You've, you need to have a little bit of all three. And if you are digging deep on one and leaving the other two out or digging on two and leaving one out, you're missing the full picture and you're missing out on what it means to be unlocked through F3 Nation. Yeah. Yeah. And it's not certainly a siloed uh, incident that is uh, that is only applied to F3, right? Like there's every organization, every community that this exists, right? You, there's teachers out there who profess that they love teaching and they love kids and they go home and, and rant and rave about how awful kids are, right? It's like, well, which is it? Which one are you? Are you the, the sad teacher or the glad teacher? Like, let's get going. Um, and certainly we can all tell war stories uh, in our own individual mammon slash work silos, right? Um, so we're not here to rant and rave and pontificate about the problem. We're here to solve it. So follow up question to that, uh, because we we mentioned the, the stuff we're trying in the F3 toolbox across the, the nation. What strategies uh, have you guys employed to encourage kind of this, this uh, holistic personal development? Man, I'm going to circle back to what Bilbo said, because I think he made a, a great point about the evolution of a man. Um, the greatest unlocking that we've witnessed is when that first step is rapidly followed up by second F engagement, right? When he makes personal connections with guys around him, builds that basis of trust and, you know, either becomes aware of how much more there is or starts to break down that facade, uh, really starts to break down that sad clown that's going in there. That seems to be the key first step. Uh, and that happens on things like pre rucks where you get a quiet 30 minutes to have a two-on-one or a three-on-one conversation. That happens in things like parking lot cafeteria where you hang out and shoot the bull. It happens in CSOPs. You go grind it out and do something stupid and hard and talk your way through it. You know, it's, it's about meeting that guy, engaging that guy personally um, and, and encouraging uh, him to open up to, to, and be authentic about who he really is. A hundred percent camo. Um, and if I could piggyback off that, I like to call it the aha moment. When you see a guy just showing up, all of a sudden it clicks. And um, I've seen guys come two or three times a week to workouts. And then all of a sudden you see it click and they're coming almost every day and they can't get enough. And they're getting involved in cafeteria. They're getting involved in Q-Source. They're all of a sudden suggesting third F events. And it's the most exciting thing to me it's like fuels me and i'm good to go for a while off of it and i can remember my aha moment it was about six months after i started i uh, was working out i was in good shape when i came to f3 so it wasn't about that i kind of enjoyed the guys and the community but uh, it was a mental health awareness month uh, we did a run in the morning at the end the cot was the most powerful cot i had ever been to because all everyone was opening up and sharing about their mental health challenges and what's they've been through in their life. And little did anyone else know in that circle of trust that my brother-in-law had taken his life just two months before. Mm. And it just broke me down. And he was a mentor to me. And it was life-changing. And that's when it clicked for me. And all of a sudden, it wasn't about what I could get from F3. It was about what I could give back to F3. And it was huge. And um, my goal as Nantan of Gold Rush is to get as many guys as I can to that and whatever it takes but it's completely you can't really predict it it's kind of random you don't know what each guy needs to get to that point so we just try to facilitate opportunity and listen to what guys have to say and we do know q source is a huge component of it uh, and getting that out to as many guys as possible in those prereqs and those activities but when a guy has a, something they're passionate about our goal is to like you said unlock that and uh, get them connected yeah to follow up on uh what Camo and Bilbo were just talking about. Uh, my aha moment was uh, a little more personal. Uh, I, I'm a talker. I mean, you put a brick wall in front of me, and he's going to know all about me by the end of the second hour. But um, mine was more uh, more of a shield lock situation. Uh, and 
you know, you, uh, Bilbo touched on mental health and I, I suffer from a little bit of that. And, you know, I, other than my wife, I'd never come out and told another man, you know, some of the things that I had gone to and, you know, I was on medication for it and stuff like that. And there was kind of a stigma, but once I broke down that vulnerability and, you know, that, that second S, the fellowship with my, you know, the ship, guys I was with in the shield doc, those were the first two men I had talked to about my situation and, seeing what it's done for me in my personal life, you know, that's why I'm so passionate about it, is I want other guys to experience what I personally have coming from the second and third if. Heck yeah. Yeah, Nick Darren, I want to add on to that. You mentioned shield lock, and that's something that uh, we talk about all the time, QSource, shield lock, accountability. Um, so I'm going to stick with you on this one with accountability and guardrails. We know that those are really those are those are beneficial for our preparedness, for us to grow, to become stronger, to be, become better. But what about that lone wolf? How do we practice the second half of our credo, you know, not leaving a man behind? You know, we we find him, we pick him up, he runs with us. I mean, is that guy toxic? What what do we do with that guy to bring him into it if he wants to be a lone wolf? Because you want to bring accountability. You've experienced it with a shield lock. So what do we do when we've got that one guy you notice in the gloom that's just something's not right. Like what, what do you do and what have you seen done and what, what works for you in your home region? What has uh, really worked for us is uh, I think a lot of uh, like water over time. It just, it takes time and you know, there is a time for candor. There's also a time for, you have to learn, you have to put that time in yourself to learn more about that person. Cause you have to find a way to break down that wall. Sometimes it's not kicking in doors. Sometimes you have to pick a lock, you know, and it's every situation sometimes is just a little bit different than each one. And, uh, but yeah, I mean, a lot of ours in our region, uh, you know, we just had to have a large meeting on to it and, you know, we, we had to put it out there, you know, we're not like, like we talked about earlier, we are, you know, knocking out the first F, uh, the third F my, my home AO, I mean, uh, I, I'm probably the worst one on the third F. I mean, I'm, I'm still, you know, <laughs> big into that, but I have, there's like eight guys at my home AO. Half of them are deacons, two preachers, an elder. It's so, I mean, yeah, I, I'm still right there with them on the third F, but I, I lean on them a lot more when it comes to the third F situations. So, but uh, it's, you know, and, we just had to sit down and face the problem head on. Like, look, here's what we're lacking. And we have, we have to do something to resolve, it. Yeah. you know, put it out there. Hi. Hey, Bil- Bilbo, um, we were talking before we hit record you and a lot of the guys around the nation. know you took a, almost a, a cross country trip, flew from California to Tennessee, and then you worked your way through North and South Carolina, went to multiple regions <laughs> Uh, met a bunch of guys and, and had great conversation. What did you notice with the regions that are thriving and then the regions that are a little bit stagnant? Did you see anything different between those that are really accelerating and those who have just kind of found a comfort zone and they, they're staying there? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I was fortunate enough to take my family, like you said, uh, to the East Coast from the West Coast, uh, hit up 11 regions. Um actually nine regions, uh, 11 posts. And it was amazing to see the differences in each region and how they were set up. And the regions that found a way to incorporate and build on the second and third F um, really were built sustainability. And they had, um, they were impacting the community more and they had a lot of growth. I won't name the region, but one region that I went to had been around for quite a while. I want to say seven, eight years um, they had about 40 or 50 regular packs, so they were smaller. And they asked me, like, how has Gold Rush grown so much? Because we've been around for almost five years now, and we've starfished multiple times, and those regions of starfishing has become pretty prominent in the Sacramento area. And I came back to the Q source and cafeteria and, you know, establishing guardrails for the guys, getting them plugged into shield locks and whetstones, and they responded back with, what's Q source? I'm like, okay, I think we found... A, uh, part of the issue here and they were you know hey start with cafeteria get the guys talking because first half is so easy to implement right like we all we, we all know we need it if you don't have to get super real you can just show up and work out and do what you need to do the reps and it can be pretty mindless 
I think some of the challenge with the second and third F is that you now have to intentionally think and get out of your comfort zone for a lot of guys. And that's hard. That's hard. You can't, that's hard to fake. And I think that's where a lot of the challenge is. Um, but yeah, it's, it was pretty clear. And, um, you know, I went to Greensboro and, uh, I mean, you guys have awesome second and third F and just the way you incorporated that and the cafeteria I went to was great. Felt at home, you know, just from the one time I posted there, um, a lot of great guys. So, um, yeah, it was cool. It was a great trip and I learned a ton. Yeah, I want to, um, that's awesome. That's a great case study. I want to circle back to your question about toxic guys, Italian job. Cause I think that gold rush hit on a little bit. I mean, the good news is in the hundreds of, of dudes that I've been exposed to, there have been very, very few that are truly toxic, right? Now, there's been some that don't fit from the jump. And most of the time, that's an example of where the guy hasn't had his aha moment, as Bilbo calls it, right? So sometimes it's just not understanding the mission. Some guys show up and they think the mission is to absolutely smash the beat down and become ultra physically fit and be a bat flipper and be a you know professional cue. Right. And there's nothing wrong with those things. There's nothing wrong with becoming the best physical version of yourself. But ultimately, you have to realize that the next step of your evolution is, OK, now don't, now I not only care about myself, I care about the dudes around me. OK, I don't have to finish first. I'm actually going to finish last. I'm going to go run with the boys in the back and pick up the six. OK, you know what? Now it's not just about the six. It's about the guys I don't even know yet. I'm going to become an EH machine. And then the last step is when you realize. Our whole freaking community is the people we have in EH yet, right? When it blows up to where you're realizing that it's about literally everybody, that's a man on fire. So those guys who are toxic in my experience, it's usually it's usually they need a conversation about, hey, man, let's talk about why you're here. Let's talk about what you're seeking. Let's talk about what you want to become. Let's talk about what you want to contribute. Those dudes can work hard. Those dudes can go all in. Sometimes they just have to be oriented for what the target is. One hundo. Yeah. I mean, I, I, we, I don't know if I said it before we started or after we started the podcast, but I, I mean, we could crush through this all day. And this may be a part two. Look, fellas, if you love this episode and you're, you're all in, uh, it was my idea. If you hated it, it was Italian Job's idea. Uh, and you, can, you can email him at italianjob at f3nation.com. No, for real. Let us know, because if we want to dive into this deeper, let's get into it. That's why the Slack channels exist. That's why DMs and Twitter uh, back and forth can exist is to is to help be a, a source uh, and a beacon for guys who are seeking the next 43 feet and just haven't found the trailhead yet right so let me do this let's kind of put a pin in this fight we'll call it the final question for now um because as it seems like what we're talking about is that virtuous leaders kind of have to have this jedi mindset insight into the shifts required for guys to move kind of beyond the bicep and into that servant side of the sir sir continuum. So how can we effectively address the behavior uh, and or the influences that might be creating this divide between physical prowess and virtuous leaders? You know, how do we solve the glad clown? Again, open to the whole group. Um, If you don't mind, I can dive into this one. I think a lot of it starts with looking 43 feet ahead. When they show up, if that's when you decide to address it, it's too late. Your region needs a culture of candor and building relationships and focus on the second and third F. Because, you know, it's like with homelessness, right? If you're trying to deal with homelessness when a guy's homeless, it's too late. It's, I mean, you can still help them, right? But it's so much more effective if you can start really early with the fathers and that's what I love about F3 because it's about making better fathers and it's about them, you know, better husbands and it's building into their community and it's fixing, you know, the problem early on. And I think as an SLT, as site cues, the message has to be servant leadership and mentoring and continuing to grow when there's not an issue. So when it is, it's not just the Nantan or just the weasel shaker coming out like, hey, like, hey, bat flipper, you know, let's get back to the mission here. Like, no, there's 15 guys coming around them and say, hey, this is not what we do here. Uh, we're about community. We're about growth. We're about invigorating male community leadership. And I think that's what it comes back to. And it takes a lot of front end work to do that. But I think that's ultimately where it starts. I think that's really, really well said, man. Uh, I think the key word that you hit is culture. Right. And culture is something that's built intentionally and it's owned by everyone. 
Uh, you know, previous podcast, we talked about how there are no spectators in F3. Every single F3 man is a participant, right? You ain't sitting on the sidelines watching. And it's the same way with this culture. And, uh, you know, a really healthy culture is when dudes get as fired up about an opportunity to go serve as they do about a dumb seesaw, right? And that needs to be lived out and exemplified by your leadership. And by the way, when I see leadership, say leadership, I don't mean the dudes with formal roles. I mean, the veteran packs. I mean, the guys who are who are showing up every day, you know, live that out. Um, exemplify that we're about so much more than just fitness, that we are a leadership development organization that's operating as a workout group. And I think it'll come. Um, and, the, you know, the biggest piece for me is just show them how amazing it can be when you get there. When, when you've got this community, this tribe, as you said, TB, of dudes who are living for so much more than just themselves. They're living for each other. They're living for their community. Man, what an amazing place to operate generationally. Tell me, yeah. boy, I read something. I read something this week, and then Nickel Durham, I'll toss it over to you. I read something this week that I didn't realize was going to tie in so well to this. I read it. I copy and pasted it into a tweet, uh, but I did not know it was going to tie so well. This is by uh, a minister named Ashley Knoll. She said, what the heart loves, the will chooses, and the mind justifies. If people are to change, what they love has to change. So now let's think about that guy who uh, who loves his physical prowess. Great. I like that. That's great. You have now, your will has, has chosen and your mind has justified. That's what matters, that I'm going to be fit. But if you want to change, you have to change the thing that you love. And the thing that you have to love is the guy across the COT from you, the guy in the circle who may be struggling in his marriage, who may be 40 pounds overweight, who may, whatever the issue is, you have to love that man. The moment you shift the focus from me being the guy, the moment you are ex getting exactly what Camo and Bilbo have referenced, you've become unlocked to be the leader that your family needs, that your community needs. And if you are focusing strictly on yourself, you have missed the boat. You have completely missed the point. Nicoderm, I didn't mean to jump on you, so I'll, I'll let you take it from here. Oh, no, you're good. Uh, you know, and just I felt the same way that, you know, Bilbo and Camo did. And that was, it's, that's what I try to always reiterate at COT is, you know, how, how much, you know, the second F has personally affected me. And that's the hardest thing is I have to make sure that I'm showing you know, every chance I get of how much, you know, the second F is, it's not just about meeting out every morning in the gloom and getting after it. It's, I mean, there's so much more and it's, it, it, it's something that we're constantly working on right now. And it's, you know, it's just one of those things that it is, it is tough to unlock. Yeah. Yeah. If everybody, if it was easy, everybody would be doing it. Right. And there'd be a dozen yeah. different books out there about it. If not, a dozen, 12 dozen thousand books. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, guys, if you listen to this or, or if you're out in the gloom and you hear the mumble chatter of the guys who have been doing a pre rock and talking shield lock and talking, uh, you hear the word shield lock and you hear the words Q source and you're, you feel like me in high school whenever anybody would tell me how great of a band Pink Floyd was. I just wanted to push him down a flight of stairs. So if you're able to change that tape, then the next thing that's going to happen is you're going to see that guy across the COT and rather than think to yourself automatically, I'm going to change that guy and he's going to thank me for it. You're going to change, put in the new tape that says, I'm going to be thankful if that man who is obviously here because he wants to change allows me to be a part of that solution. Mm -hmm. um, and that's, that's that big shift. That's that, that F3 is all about. It's right. like, it, it, we hear it when we're in every single grow rock. It's not about you. It's about the guy on the left and the right of you. Yeah. Um, well, cool. Listen, we could go on all day, as I've said already, multiple times. So let's do this. Uh, Italian job. You've already kind of laid the groundwork for your closing statement. Is there anything you want to add before we sign off? Otherwise, I have a hunch there's going to be a part two on this one. I'll tell you what, I, I do want to share one thing that has been heavy on my heart lately, and it has to do with a guy that I had not seen in many years. Um, for the sake of this conversation, we'll call him Brian. I hadn't seen Brian for about seven years. And uh, when I saw him again, 
he looked like he had gained about 100 pounds. And he was 130 pounds to start with, and then all of a sudden he had gained 100 pounds. So you noticed it. And I saw him at a daddy-daughter dance, and um, and he just – he he looked down he looked depressed um he wouldn't really make eye contact and he smelled a little bit like alcohol and i thought this that's kind of strange to be at a daddy daughter dance and, and but i didn't think anything of it and and i kicked the can on it and said well it's no big deal it's nothing to be concerned about and then i saw uh his wife was asking for prayers cuz he was in the hospital he was uh his organs were failing from uh from an addiction to alcohol what would have happened if I would have stopped talking to him six, seven years ago? What would have happened if I would have said something back in March? Now, I'm not, I'm not going to leave it on a sour note and tell you that you know he only had a he only has a ten to fifteen percent chance of coming out of the hospital. I got a text message from him today that said, "Hey man, uh, thanks for reaching out. Uh, obviously, I couldn't answer for the last eight days. I've been ICU on a ventilator." He said, um, I just want you to know I've got a long road ahead of me. I hope the worst is over. When I get back up, can we get together sometime, maybe go for a walk or a jog and talk in the evenings? And dude, uh, goosebumps, absolute yeah. goosebumps, um, tears in my eyes as I say it, because I thought I'd lost a friend um, and I didn't say anything. And now he's saying, hey, brother, when uh, when I get out of here, <laughs> can we go for a walk and talk? Hell yes. Hell yeah, Brian, we're going to go for a walk and we're going to talk. Um, that's, he's going to make me better because he is going to open up in the second and third F. It ain't about the walk guys. It's about the talk. And, uh, and so if you got a glad clown in your life, um, maybe you should say something and not, not kick it down the road like I did for seven years and not say anything. Uh, I have a golden opportunity to uh, to talk to a friend and and hope that things return and and things go well, but not everybody gets that second chance. So, the good news coming out of that conversation. Yeah, man, hallelujah. Yeah, uh, you got a golden ticket. I'm glad to see you cashing in. Uh, leaders lead with love, and sometimes that hurts like hell. Uh, Nick Derm, IJ, of course, Bilbo and Camo, uh, love you guys. Mean it. Thanks for carving out the time and, and sharing your knowledge and sharing your heart. We'll be back next week. In the meantime, enjoy your Labor Day. Love the, uh, Hug the ones you love. Eat a cheeseburger for America. And as always, be good or be good at it. Love you, man. Thank you.